Welcome to the Keeping It Israel podcast with Jeff Feuders, where Jeff and his guests talk everything Israel as it relates to Christian faith and the church. If you are a Christian and you stand with Israel, you will be encouraged and challenged by this podcast. And if you're not so sure about the whole Israel thing, you need to learn how your faith connects with Israel and why standing with Israel matters. Now here's Jeff with today's guest. Welcome to the podcast today. My name is Jeff and I will be your host. I'm excited about today's episode uh, because a little while back I was recommended by uh, a couple of friends to watch some videos by a couple from Israel. And uh, the YouTube channel was called Sergio and Rhoda in Israel. And so I, I checked them out. I watched a few of these videos. They were so much fun and it looked like they were having so much fun doing them. And uh, the more that I looked into them, the more I realized that there was a, a faith connection here. They were actually believers. And so on a whim, uh, I reached out to them and they got back to me and said, yes, we would love to be able to uh, be interviewed and be a part of your podcast. So let's uh, join me and my conversation with Sergio and Rhoda in Israel. We are live. And... Uh, I am excited today. Uh, this is an episode of our Keeping It Israel podcast, but uh, we wanted to offer it also as a live event because uh, Sergio and Rhoda are famous. You guys are like, uh, <laughs> I called you in the advertising YouTube sensations, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll build this up as much as we can. Uh, <laughs> very, very exciting to, uh, to have you on the podcast today. And um, I want to just start, first of all, by saying thank you. Uh, I'm sure you guys get lots of emails and lots of inquiries from lots of people all over the world. And I uh, appreciated that you got back to me and uh, that we're able to do this. And uh, we just had a little conversation before we started. And we know some of the same people, which is like way cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves, first of all. Who are you? Uh, where are you from? How'd you, how did you get together? Well, thanks so much, Jeff. Well, first of all, it's our honor to, to be here. Uh, when you reached out to us, we were, uh, we were excited. Uh, you know, something inside of us felt right about this and, uh, you know, just following the Lord's leading on this. And um, we are, you know, we have our YouTube channel um, and we'll talk, I guess, a little bit more about that. Um, if you have any questions. Um, from a personal background, I was born in Lithuania, actually, not in Israel. And uh, in, and in uh, 92, um, my parents, they're Russian speaking parents. We moved as a family to Israel. We did the Aliyah, the repatriation. And uh, so I grew up basically, I was seven back at the time in 92. Um, and uh, we, we went to school here, went to college, you know, went to the military. And, and then in around 2007, 2008, uh, there was a, a joint meeting between Arab and Jewish believers in, here in Nazareth. And that's how I met Rhoda. And uh, who is okay. way more local than I am to, to Israel, what did you say? <laughs> well, I was born and raised in Nazareth, actually. And um, uh, to believing Christian parents, very devout parents. They love the Lord. They've been active in ministry all of our lives. Um, my dad today is a pastor of a small local church here. And uh, as Sergio said, we have met at this uh, meeting that our churches did, which is awesome because they just wanted to bring the youth to worship together and fellowship together in the name of Jesus and, you know, cross these, some political barriers that might leave a stain even on the younger generation. Mm. And so we got married yeah. and then we left to the States right. for work yeah. and the rest is history, rest I guess. History. Yeah, rest <laughs> yeah. History. yeah. I read a little bit on your, uh, your website and, and your YouTube channel. You were in the States for seven years and, yeah. um, Tell us a little bit about that journey. What, what did you do? Uh, what are your occupations? Yeah, so uh, after we got married, we kind of uh, immediately went to the United States. Uh, I had a job offer. I was working as a subcontractor for Hewlett Packard, uh, and I'm an IT, a software developer, and um, lead the development department. And so Rhoda agreed to come with me, <laughs> and we lived there for seven years. Um, I think it was... Um, the biggest blessing in our lives because we, we, when we got married, we weren't following the Lord immediately. And so um, somehow the Lord put us in a path with some very special people in the United mm -hmm. States who, who 
shone the light into our lives and and that changed everything um, mm. so yeah we lived there seven years and uh we got back three years ago Has it been a, a, a little bit over. more three three yeah. and a half years ago yeah. to israel um uh, after my work is done there and we said we're gonna start our own business here and so we start our own it business in israel our startup it's um was our primary goal as we came back here right and somehow in the process a youtube channel started <laughs> <laughs> so what the, what the youtube channel was just accidental um yeah you want me to no, go ahead. No. okay so i my eldest brother he lives in italy he studied there and he lives he's married there and so the first time he brought his wife over we were taking them sightseeing around and we had just gotten back it's been like maybe a few months since we have gotten back from the states and so we thought why not take a few videos and just show our church in the us that we attended there and just send them because most of the people either for poverty or age or whatever they couldn't come here and mm. so we started we showed the first video and we opened a youtube channel because it was just the easiest like um platform to send uh, the, video, yeah. the videos yeah. over and uh, then they asked for another one and then they asked for another one and since my brother and sister-in-law were here for a couple of weeks we were filming a lot with them and so we started sending them and that's how it just continued yeah, yeah. that was the start of it <laughs> wow yeah. So, I mean, I, I've watched your videos. I can't say that I've watched them all yet, but I'm, I'm working through them. Um, there's only so many hours in the day I'm finding, <laughs> but uh, uh, here's the thing. I, I come, uh, we do a, a small little television show here in Canada. It's a half hour show that, uh, that we come and do on location in Israel. So mm -hmm. I know, uh, I know what is involved in, getting to sites, getting permission, uh, doing the, doing the shooting, coming home, doing the editing, putting it all together. Um, how do you have time to do all of that and your IT business as well? Mm. That's a really good question. Um, the answer is we don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the honest. If I I've told you how many times, you know, I, I wanted to give up and quit uh, the channel. Um, it, it, it was, I don't know how many times it happened. Yeah. And every almost time, every week. yeah, right. and almost every time, the first few years, uh, we were really struggling to keeping it up, saying there's just not enough hours in a day. Uh, you know, one episode can take over 100 hours to edit, 160 mm -hmm. sometimes, and there's just not enough time for anything to sleep. Or So every time we get an email from somebody saying, you know, how uh, this particular subject or somebody who spoke, maybe a guest on our show or something that got them closer um, uh, to or got them to pick up the Bible and read and uh, as a result closer to the Lord and we said well if that's the fact we've got to keep going we've got to keep going and so we kept going until like a year ago we said okay now we just have to be more um, mindful of planning ahead and just making it work and so the, this yeah. past year uh, has been uh, just working on that being able to squeeze everything together um, but yeah it's, it's, it takes a lot of time yeah yeah, yeah. Now, you guys, you look like you're having a lot of fun, though, when you're doing it. He's a good editor. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, we, we are. Yeah, there, we do, yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot of good time to it. And uh, there are times when it's difficult. And, yeah. and I tell you what, nothing that uh, a prayer cannot take away. You know, what, what do you call those moments? Uh, not... not uh, um, uh, bloopers not bloopers uh, grumpers grumpers, grumpers, yeah, grumpers. Grumper it's, it's it's you know when you have to take the same take maybe 30 times and it takes the fun out of it and yeah. then when we see that we're it's no longer fun we gotta no, no, no longer um uh, joyful we have to get on our knees and pray and yeah. say lord uh, it's, we can't do it and and he helps every time yeah. uh, it's, it's incredible i uh i completely understand i do uh yeah some of uh, our, our very fun times have been in, you know, crowded areas where, um, you know, you're trying to get a shot, like a, a bit of a walk and talk or just a bit of an intro or an outro. And people keep walking through the shot <laughs> or they walk <laughs> in behind and make goofy faces and uh, yeah. drives me crazy. And, you know, I have to be I have to be a, a Christian in those moments. I have to be uh, pastor like Christ like. And uh, it's it's not easy sometimes. <laughs> you uh, you can uh, you can get a little annoyed after about the fifth time oh, somebody yeah. walks through your shot. 
I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> well, listen, so you, you go, you start your IT business. I'm, I'm hoping that's going well, that, uh, you know, that, that everything is good on that front. But then this YouTube channel takes off, and I mean really takes off. I, I've looked mm -hmm. at um, some of your, your numbers, and as someone else, you know, our ministry has a YouTube channel. You guys have like in the millions of views on some of your videos. Mm -hmm. um, what does that kind of exposure uh, do, and, and uh, what kind of, I guess, pressure is there that comes from that as you're, as you're making new videos? Wow, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think in the beginning, we were more at liberty to not think so much what we're going to say. It was just sending a video to our friends as yeah. a link. Yeah. Right. Um, and so when one day YouTube put one of our videos, uh, Capernaum, uh, we don't know exactly how and why it happened. All we know, it just happened. And overnight, it, it's like 150,000 views and then towards a million in the first month. Uh, all it took is for YouTube to put it on the homepage and that he kept on going uh, since then. And that happened a year ago. Um, so um, when that happened, you know, we're like, wow, okay. <laughs> uh, we, we, we need to be, there is an opportunity here. I mean, when you have um, um, an audience that in a large audience, you're thinking, wow, the, first of all, quitting is no longer a question because we cannot let go of the opportunity to, to um, make somebody's day better who, you know, who yearns to see where Jesus has walked or uh, to tell somebody about Jesus who have never heard about him before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we consider it as a ministry. Yeah, yeah as a ministry. And mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, it, it did make a big difference uh, in terms of what we do and also put more effort, um, uh, more prayer into it and take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. Wow. And upgrade the equipment. <laughs> and upgrade we the started equipment. with an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Just an iPhone, eh? Incredible. Yeah, just an iPhone, nothing else. I, uh, that, that is amazing. That is amazing. Uh, and, you know, YouTube putting it on the homepage, you have no control over that. It's just something that happened one day. And, mm. uh, and now you're, I mean, literally people from all over the world are watching. I'm, I know you're watching your analytics. I know you're seeing uh, mm. where some of those numbers are coming from. And yeah. um, I, I just think that's, that's phenomenal. And, and I love that you have sort of branded this in your minds and hearts as a ministry. I, I think that's mm. uh, so uh, amazing because a lot of people would, would run with that sort of notoriety and think about, how much money can we make and how can we, mm. you know, how can we get more, uh, you know, more seen and mm. all of those kind of things. No, you're thinking about how can people uh, experience uh, the love of, of Jesus? You know, how can mm. people come to know more about the Bible? And uh, I just, I really, um, I really uh, am proud of you for that. You know, I, uh, you. I encourage well, you in you that. I think that's amazing. That was, that was an interesting moment that kind of opened our eyes towards that because yeah. we, we didn't see it. With, first, we always saw it as just a way for people to experience the land who can't come here. Um, but then there was this one video. It was Lot's wife. We, we went to the south and we showed the people what, you know, where the monument, traditional, you know, traditional Israeli place, place yeah. for Lot's wife, uh, which we don't believe that's the place. And we spoke in the video that we don't think that's the exact spot, but we still showed it what's in Israel. And it was a very, very simple video, maybe I don't know, seven, eight minutes. And then it got 2 million views and most of them are not Christians. Most of them were Muslim. And we're like, I don't understand how that's even possible. And then we realized that Lot's wife and the story is written in the Quran as well. And so oh. apparently that's a big topic for them and they want to see where it's at and they Google and they subscribe to the channel and they watch other videos. And we have some other people saying, Hey, we watch all your videos. And we're thinking that means they heard the gospel. Yeah. Um, we don't know what their spiritual state is, but just the fact that they were able to be, that they were exposed to it or it just says, Hey, okay, so this is greater than what we thought it is. And it's, and it's not about us. There's actual ministry here. Um, mm. So yeah, that was a nine opener kind of moment for us. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. I, I think this really is uh, 
could be a, a bit of a, a God connection for us here because, you know, one of, one of our hearts is to come alongside uh, people in Israel who are in ministry, who are, uh, you know, actively uh, sharing about God, about Jesus, about the, the, mm. the message of the gospel. And um, we, we will just uh, pick you up and start to pray for you along with all of the rest and, uh, you know, when I first started watching your videos, I think I, maybe I saw some of the early fun, fun ones. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I was like, man, these are really amazing. My dad, actually, my, my 83 year old dad, uh, told me about some of your videos. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then so did, uh, so did another friend of mine, a pastor that I worked with actually in Mississauga, he had seen some. And so, so yeah, I wasn't really sure at the beginning, like, what you guys were all about and, and all that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And then I, I watched a few more and I thought, man, they, there's some, there's some sort of faith connection here. And uh, so it's been really, it's been really great to kind of um, discover who you are. And now today to be able to actually meet you, although uh, we're not, you know, together, together, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, it's, and by the way, it's nice to be you know, in Israel, because I haven't been there since November. And uh, with this wow. whole COVID thing, um, I don't know when I'll get back. I really don't. Now, you guys, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, uh, lately, I've been trying to steer away from COVID as much as possible, because it gets depressing mm -hmm. after a while. <laughs> but uh, uh, you're in, uh, you're in Nazareth, which I understand from a couple of my friends in Nazareth, that uh, you're in a red zone right now. Is that, is that still the case? Yeah, we are actually on a full lockdown in all of Israel right now. Mm -hmm. All of Israel. Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, That's because it. there are holidays now. We just passed Rosh Hashanah. There's going to be Yom Kippur. And then what is the one after it? It's Sukkot. Sukkot, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're going to have like, um, we're going to have a lockdown because I think they think that the holidays and the wedding season in the summer, that's when a lot of people gather and they get more exposed and, get more exposed and they haven't been listening to the rules as, as much as they should have. And so we've had a spread <laughs> yeah. and that's the situation. Yeah. yeah. So we're in lockdown and you know, that affects a bit of our, of our uh, planning and filming, yeah. but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but to the most part, uh, the government, uh, uh, does have some sense in terms of, you know, if, if you're not sick and if you don't have any symptoms uh, and you have work that does not um, require you to, you know, like um, host people or have crowds gathering, mm -hmm. you are allowed to go. So practically, legally, Rhoda and I can leave the city to go and film a location if we need to. And we were able to film a few sites like this during uh, some of these times. And that's how we were able to keep going with our last season and not stop. Okay, good. Yeah. So you've you've enjoyed uh, what it's like to actually shoot video without a bunch of people in the background. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a I'm a photographer too, and that's always my that's always my sort of pet peeve is everywhere you go to these beautiful places, but you cannot get a single shot without a person in it. You know. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I suppose there's some small blessing in uh, in lockdown for that reason. Yeah. 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 There's always something positive we can draw. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, this is great. And um, I, I look forward, uh, you know, to uh, other videos that, uh, that will be coming. And uh, we uh, are just, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to make this connection and to meet you guys. And I know that um, uh, because of some of the similarities uh, in, in what we've done, um, maybe maybe we'll have some opportunities together in the future too i think that would be really really cool and uh you know for us um we're the same we're not looking to become famous what we're looking mm -hmm. to is to make is to make jesus famous and mm -hmm. uh to do that especially in the land of israel i mean that's my my vision my heart my call mm -hmm. is uh is for the uh for the the people of israel to come to to faith in uh, in Jesus and Yeshua, so um, it would be just awesome if we can do some things together, and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit off camera. But uh, I just think this is a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity. Now, behind you, that's not a window, right? That's a TV screen. That, that is, yeah. Okay. You, at first, I thought maybe we were getting the view of Nazareth out your window, but uh, it is it is the view of Nazareth. I, I, th I put it on here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at the view of Nazareth. What you're seeing there is what we're looking at right now. 
But if it okay. refers to camera, you know, the light will be behind it. So be terrible. It. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, but that's, what, that's out of our window. Yeah, that's the Nazareth. I get uh, it. I get it. Hey, something I'm excited about. I'll, uh, we just finished, uh, well, not finished. We're half finished um, a documentary series called The Miraculous Victories of Israel. And um, wow. we have, uh, we've filmed six one-hour episodes um, walking with some archaeologists, some theologians, some pastors, just kind of talking about, you know, how is it that God always shows up on behalf of, you know, on behalf yeah. of Israel and, uh, and these things that, that have occurred. So um, I, we just started actually making the first three episodes available. And um, uh, I always throw it into the podcast a little bit so I can put a little bit of uh, information on the bottom of the screen when I edit and, and uh, hopefully people will go and check that out. But uh, it's, uh, it's going to be, I hope, you know, I hope it'll be something that, that gets us some exposure in the U S as well. Cause we're, um, we're a brand new charity in the United States also 501 C three there and just starting to build a little bit of a base and, and uh, hoping that um, uh, maybe we'll even, start putting the show on television down there although wow. that's very expensive so pray with us about that and wow, uh, absolutely we would yeah. love to see them actually because yeah. when we did the uh, syria episode um, uh, we went up to the border and you know we could even see uh at the time hamas driving right in front of us um and uh, yeah because yeah. yeah and so and we did the Syria, Syria episode and spoke about that. And when we made the research, it was unbelievable. And, but we just, you know, we just barely scraped the surface there. So uh, I know there is a few videos out there, but there's not that much information. We're trying mm -hmm. to find those yeah. um, miraculous stories. It, it, it was, uh, it was you, you could see bits and pieces here and there, but nothing collected in a series and well-documented. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember from my military days, uh, our, our general sharing one miraculous story and that was absolutely fascinating. So yeah. we can't wait actually to see those. Uh, wow. Well, I the uh, the one on the modern the modern wars of of Israel, uh -huh. um, we struggled as well to get good, really good, uh, you know, testimonials and and things like mm -hmm. that. But uh, we're we're pulling it together now. That's um, that'll be episode uh, five, I think. So, wow. so, um, we've got one, two and three done. So we did, we did, uh, um, oh, so you're we, starting from the biblical wars in Israel. That's well, right. All the way. Wow. So we did, so we did the conquest, the we did the conquest wow. in Jericho and then wow. we, um, uh, not just Jericho, the conquest over the promised land kind of thing. Mm. Uh, Hetzor was, was a big piece of that because mm. there's, there's so much physical evidence to prove the biblical story. Um, uh, Hetzor is, um, is amazing. And we mm -hmm. actually went there with, uh, with an archeologist and, uh, interviewed, interviewed him. And so, um, we did Hetzor. Then we did, the next one was David and Goliath, which mm. I saw you guys videos on David and Goliath, man, I wish I could have had you as part of our doc series. It was, <laughs> you, you guys made it so much fun, but, uh, we went, we went with Yossi Garfinkel. Uh, the the wow. archaeologist up to um, up to Kirbet Kayafa, uh, we did some some shots in the Valley of Elah and, and the whole thing. Um, so then we, the David and Goliath was the second one, and then we also did uh, the siege of Jerusalem with uh, King mm -hmm. Sennacherib and, and King Hezekiah, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. prophet Isaiah. Interviewed uh, Doctor Elat Mazar and. Um, uh, some others about mm -hmm. some of the discoveries that sort of put Hezekiah and Isaiah together, you know, with uh, the bullae that they found. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. And um, it's really, I think, just an encouragement for believers. We want believers to be encouraged that sort of no matter what battle we face, you know, uh, God's got this, you know, he's, he's got our back and, and he's had his hand on, on the children of Israel for all these years. So, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll, uh, when we get off, camera well miraculousvictories.com is the website but we'll uh, we'll chat a little bit more about it when we're done anyhow this has been fantastic you guys i uh now tell me before before we sort of get to a, a point of wrapping up tell me um what sort of ministry involvement and connection that you have uh in the community where you live what are you guys doing uh with regard to uh sort of faith community and and uh, some of that kind of stuff yeah, that's a good question um, we attend the church that my dad pastors. It's right next door. <laughs> so, oh, perfect. 
we just walk 10 steps and we're there. Um, I do translations there. Uh, you know, before COVID, there were, we got a lot of groups and sometimes individuals or volunteers that come from the US or Canada or the English speaking world. And so I'd be the translator for them. So that's my uh, little ministry in the church. Um, and sometimes we visit with Sergio's church where he can uh, bless them with yeah. playing the piano and uh, yeah. So, yeah, the music for it. And the reason why Rosa says my church, her church is actually, <laughs> it's, I guess it's not exactly like it, but from a historical perspective. Yeah. Uh, so we grew up literally across, you know, I grew up in Nazareth elite, which is the Jewish Nazareth, and Rosa grew up in Nazareth, the, the Arab town, Nazareth. So her church is Arab speakers and it's an Arabic language. And uh, ours is, would be in uh, English sometimes or in Hebrew or Russian. Mm -hmm. So that's the population. They're mostly Hebrew and Russian speakers. And the right. pastors would come from you know, Netherlands or America and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got my church, your church. But mm -hmm. now we both visit uh, uh, Rodas church and, uh, and, and still are in a close relationship and uh, fellowship with the church, the Nazareth elite. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you come to this area next time, I uh, would love to um there's something together uh, at least go and have the best arabic coffee with sweets if, if you like that uh and uh, so, so i like sweets but but i'm more of a savory guy so oh. so let's actually go do like arab food because uh you know uh, sweets are good but uh uh <laughs> give, give me some of the, some of that uh that good Ar there's an arab dish that's like that's like uh, rice and chicken and like it's all together. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I can never yeah. remember the name of it. It's uh, amazing. Malube? No, not Malube. It's it, uh, um, Hashwa. Hashwa. Ah, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, so, so let's do that. Or and then we'll have sweets. Like it has two names. Sorry. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll have sweets after. We'll have sweets after. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Come on over and we'll do a few of those dishes and uh, <laughs> we'll get some sweets over too. <laughs> that will be fantastic. Well, listen, this has been, uh, this has been really great. And here's something I just picked up on while you were talking and I'm, I'll just confirm uh, my suspicion. So you're Lithuanian, but you're a Lithu Lithuanian Jew. Is that correct? Uh, well, you know, it's, I'm not sure. I was born in Lithuania, but back at the time it was USSR and my Russians have more, uh, my, my parents have more Russian descent, um, Ukrainian, okay. Russia. So Actually, I don't even have Lithuanian citizenship. So I was just born there as location. My grandma is there and we came okay. to visit her. Uh, but uh, I don't know if qualifying as Lithuanian Jew. It's, I guess, from uh, a Russian uh, heritage. Russian Jew. That's what, I, that's what I would refer to me in Israel, Russian Jew. Okay. So this is beautiful because I, this, this is, I'm looking at the one new man right, right in front of me. Uh, you know, Jew and Arab together. Uh, believing in Jesus, and to me, that's one of the one of the greatest miracles uh, that I witness uh, in Israel, is that uh, is that those barriers are are being overcome through uh, through Yeshua, through Jesus. Yes. Yeah, that's the only way to peace and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we believe. We've seen it. We've seen it happen with people only Amen. through Christ. True. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know what? I I see. I watch. Uh, what's been happening, you know, Washington, D.C., the last couple of weeks with peace between uh, Bahrain and the United mm -hmm. Arab Emirates mm -hmm. and, and these normalized mm -hmm. relations and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm watch watching for a video from you guys on, on that. You know, maybe there's a challenge I can throw out. Uh, but but uh, I think that, that what we're seeing, um, you know, it's, it's going to make a lot of people sort of feel warm and fuzzy inside. But, mm -hmm. um, you know my opinion at least and i don't want to sound doomsdayish but 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 peace in the middle east uh is still a long ways off if if i'm not mistaken um all this seems to have done is is to have angered uh, other arab factions uh you know to the point where uh, where this is going to be you know maybe a little uncomfortable for israel for a while still but i don't know what's your opinion on that uh, that's a good question i you know, we, uh, we've kind of made a choice to, um, when we realized like what the videos we do is, is a ministry that, um, and its goal and purpose is to bring people to the Lord and those who already know the Lord to get them, um, pick up the Bibles and be more excited about, mm -hmm. Hey, these are not fiction stories. These are true events and happen. And so we kind of mm -hmm. make a cautious decision 
uh, especially because of our background as well, uh, to, to live out the peace and keep our opinions as, 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 uh, as suppressed as possible in, in terms of, um, you know, we, we want to we wanna live out the, the message of Christ um, and, uh, and try to be cautious about expressing our opinions too much, at least at this point, especially when there's so much we don't know and haven't made the research about uh, when it comes to the peace agreements and everything. Uh, we do know that, like you said, there could be a warm, fuzzy feeling, and it's some, there's definitely good in this. Um, but uh, we do know that truly there is no peace except that is in Christ. Uh, we, we, we've lived that in our personal lives. We've seen that in, in, in our surroundings. And uh, that's what the Bible teaches us. And so uh, we truly look forward to that. And that's kind of our goal and aim is to, is to focus on that. Mm-hmm. That's great. You know what? I, and I, I commend you for that. I think that that's, uh, that is tremendous. And um, I'm just trying to find here our live event. So it, you guys have time to answer questions if we have anybody live that, uh, that wants to ask you something. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just find here where we're at. And uh, if you are on Facebook Live, and you have a question for, uh, oh, that's not going to be good. How am I going to mute that? Okay. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I just had to mute the Facebook Live thing because of the delay. <laughs> uh, I could hear myself saying the same thing I just said. I thought I was having a bit of a medical <laughs> event there, but uh, <laughs> apparently I'm okay. So, um <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've got some, uh, if there's anybody on Facebook Live right now that uh, would like to ask a question, I'll get you, I probably should have said this earlier because they're because of this mm-hmm. delay, but um, mm-hmm. we'll see if, if uh, anybody jumps in here and uh, has anything they want to ask you guys. Um, and in the meantime, what's, what's the name of your dad's church, Rhoda? Um, it's called New Life Baptist Church Nazareth, I think something like that. Okay. New Life Baptist Church, yeah. Okay, great. Well, we'll look, uh, we'll look for that the next time we're there. I, uh, yeah. We have a few connections, a few connections in Nazareth, probably a couple at least. Um, and uh, one would be uh, Nazar and Katie Tuma over at the yeah. Nazarene Church. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think where, where else. There, there are other ministries there as well. And if anybody from Nazareth is watching, and I'm forgetting who you are, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's, that's just, it's a lot to, it's a lot to keep up here. Um, yeah. you know, when you're, yeah, it's when tough, you're... especially when you're put on the spot <laughs> to remember. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you're thinking now about, uh, Facebook and questions and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, so far we've got nobody chiming in here. And so, um, we'll give it another minute or so and see if, if anybody asks a question. I, I do want to just... Have you ever had the chance? Oh, sorry. You want to ask something? No, go ahead. Uh, I want to ask, have you ever had the chance to actually visit the Temple Mount in any of your videos, guys, that you're doing in the series, uh, the, the site where the, you know, the, the walk is? We have not uh, videotaped up there. Um, it is, uh, we go occasionally, mm-hmm. but uh, to take cameras and, and actually do a shoot up there, uh, as I'm sure you've discovered, is a little bit problematic. And, um, so, uh, in my, in my predecessor's time, he and his cameraman actually did get up there once and Mm kind of with, uh, with a small camera, were able to do a bit of an interview kind of over by the Eastern gate, uh, kind of incognito, but, um, but yeah, we, we've tried to do everything that we do officially, you know what I mean? Right. Like like we try to get the proper permissions and, and do what we can on the sites. And so, it's um, it's it's been interesting. How about you guys? Have you been able? Yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm asking because we, I mean, we lived there broader than our entire life. I was seven, and we never had a chance to go there until a couple of weeks ago, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was so you know you get in and you you already know this, and there's the and if they do a briefing to foreigners or they immediately do it like through the tour guide or something. But for us, because we're locals, the police officer stops us and says. Uh, this is your first time, yeah, so let me take you aside and give you a briefing. It's like five, ten minute briefing, what we're allowed to do, what we're not. We can't hold hands. We can't, you know, yeah. pat each other on the shoulder, uh, touch nothing, where we can walk, where we cannot walk. 
And after like 10 minutes of briefing, we're so thankful for this opportunity. We're smiling, we're excited. We have no camera gear on us because we know it's not allowed. And then we pass through the gate and then I'm like, hold on, hold on. And I go back to the officer and I say, excuse me, officer, um, what about videos and photos? Uh, is that something I can do uh, with, with my iPhone? He goes, come on, of course. Go and film as much as you want. <laughs> Knock yourself out. And I go, really? He's like, yes, go. <laughs> it's like, okay. Wow. <laughs> so we took our iPhone and we didn't do any interviews or talk to each other, but we just took the iPhone oh, and good. filmed the entire experience of walking on the gate, uh, on the bridge, walk through the uh, gate, and walk through the whole area uh, and then see the Golden Gate where, you know, where people could supposed to open and yeah. And then went out and we filmed the whole thing as an experience and we can't wait. We, we were going to release this video in a couple of weeks, not as a interview kind of a thing like we usually right, do. It's going right. to be entirely different, just experience. So what it would be like to visit it if you were there as well. Um, so we just, we just can't wait. It was, it was quite a... Mm -hmm. Uh, quite an experience uh, it was yeah. tough to explain <laughs> even though I, I was wondering about like having a permission to bring a bigger camera because when we were up there there was like uh, a photographer with uh, I think a newlywed couple oh, yeah. uh, they were Muslim because the woman had the uh, covering yeah. on but they were taking like wedding pictures yeah. or okay. or some sort of pictures together yeah. and so I was surprised I was like maybe they would allow maybe. having yeah. some sort of something up there yeah. but I don't know, or maybe it's just for them yeah. um, that it's allowed. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. Well, we will, uh, you know, we'll be we'll be looking into that. We we hope to get back next year. We need to shoot yeah. thirteen more episodes of our show because uh, yeah. the the ones that are airing right now are getting old. You know, we're just doing kind of reruns every week on the, on the airtime that we have. Hey, we have a question for you guys, um, yes. Sally McGregor is asking if if the country opens up for tourism. Would you guys ever host a tour together? Oh, that's that's a good question. Um, you know what? We'll we'll be praying about it. We never mm -hmm. thought of to do it. Uh, Whenever you know, we were like we said before, it's just so much to do from editing to mm -hmm. to our daily jobs. Uh, that we can't even imagine how we're going to fit a tour into the schedule. However, with the mm -hmm. Lord, if it's His will, everything's possible, and so we'll 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 be praying about it. Um, yeah. Right now, okay. we have nothing planned or scheduled for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that was, uh, that was the only question that we had up till now. And I don't want to keep you guys unduly. Uh, we, um, uh, we'll, we'll chat a little bit here when we're finished. But uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on today and for talking to me, who you never met before and didn't know. <laughs> and uh, uh, I just, this has been, for me at least, uh, just a, a great experience. I really appreciate getting to know you guys a little better. And um, love the work that you're doing but more than that i mean the the videos are fantastic but hearing you talk today uh, i just love your heart uh, for what you're doing and why you're doing it and uh, i commend you and and uh, god bless you for that thank you so much it's been an honor and, and privilege thank you so much well thank you for joining my guests and i on the podcast today what a great interview with sergio and rhoda and wow what great people I just uh, loved getting to know them along with all of you as you were listening into our conversation together. And I believe that uh, we will have many connections together in the future uh, with this wonderful couple and some of the ministries that they're involved in there in the land of Israel. I want to encourage you, please go to their uh, channel, their YouTube channel, Sergio and Rhoda in Israel and click subscribe. They would love to have you following their videos and you're going to enjoy them. They are absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal videos. And while I'm talking about YouTube, I would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel as well. We post uh, many videos up there, ministry updates from Israel, personal communications from myself. Our podcasts are posted on our YouTube channel as well. And also the television show, First Century Foundations, that we air here in Canada on Christian television. Uh, you can get those episodes once they've uh, aired. We post them up on the YouTube channel as well. So please subscribe to our channel also. We would love for you to do that. 
Don't forget, we are a registered charity here in Canada and a registered 501c3 in the United States. If you would like to help ministries in Israel, could I just uh, say to you from the bottom of my heart, we would appreciate so much your partnership with First Century Foundations as we partner with over 70 ministries in the land of Israel, helping them to do uh, the work that God has called them to do there in the land. And so God bless you as you uh, as you engage with us in that way. Our website is firstcenturyfoundations.com and forward slash donate. If you would like to donate, you can do so there. And there are options to do so both in Canada and the United States. Well, God bless you today. I am so grateful that you joined us and hope that you will continue to listen in. Thank you for joining us for the Keeping It Israel podcast. And remember, as Christians, we stand with Israel.